Tech Rabbit here again. So anyway, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, open this one up and then we're going to test this um, spare floppy drive that I succeeded in buying. Now this should be the exact same model as we have already in here and probably actually taken out of pretty much the same equipment though, but we um, have to test this. Um, these uh, similar um, Sony uh, floppy disk drives are not that easy to come by and lots of the prices are like $150, $200, so I picked this up for... I don't think that the seller really knew what they were selling. This is a... not to go too much into detail, but this is a pretty special floppy disk drive. This is on um, 600 RPM and um, uh, has no standard power connector. I mean, when I'm referring to standard, I mean what, what we have, or those that have been working with PCs that have floppy disk drives in the past that have come into the phase where you did no longer needed to think about what floppy d disk drive um, you were installing. Uh, so after that period, so then um, the power connector. So this actually has a, uh, uh, a, a, a location for two different types of... <laughs> Plus the thing is that this has um, power feed through the um, flat um, cable also. And um, this, the pinout here is um, it's not the same as uh, for a PC um, floppy disk drive, the so-called standard PC floppy disk drive. So, um, yeah, so that was my, one of my ideas was to keep this in good shape, is to um, actually have a spare, because this is probably the most weak link, in the most likelihood. Um, yeah, so it's on. Let's see if we can't open this thing. So it has six screws to get the cover off. And um, sadly we're going to have to um, break the warranty calibration seal that was put on this device some 20 odd years ago. So, so now we're going to actually lose the warranty and, cert and calibration certifications. Really sad. <laughs> screw here in the corner so let's see if I can get this to the camera but oh, so that's actually quite good. So then it has small torx screws. I'll move it over here so fall over. equipment bag you can't easily remove. Okay. Was it screwed on or riveted? Let's just quickly check. Actually it is Torx. It is Torx screws. Didn't notice that. But it's probably not it's not the same. It's a different size. Oh well, it's actually the same size. Just make sure. Oh, it is actually the same size. That is actually interesting. I might actually leave this. 
because I don't have an extensive lab environment, so I might actually. Uh, then it also has one. You can see it, one down in the corner there, which I have over here. So take this out. only these four torque screws holding this. As in my small lab it might actually be convenient. Yes. <laughs> That's got a bit. I wasn't able to clean underneath. This is also a good thing. Now I can actually clean. And then it's just a pouch. So this I could actually store somewhere else. I'll make this a bit more compact. So I'm just going to um just gonna take a second to clean this off um, before we open it so that we don't um put any dirt inside. So anyway that's interesting. So this in the there's a service manual for this and I'll put a link to it in the um, comments. But um, it's actually more than six screws. Because we have three here we actually turn out to this three here and then there's two on the side. So that's that's eight. service man. Take the other screw. No, I haven't actually have one screw. Okay, so that ma <laughs> uh, first impressions of service manual. Yeah, <laughs> not exactly trustworthy. Okay, so, so that means there's another screw on the side, hidden in the same place. If we look at cover screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's ten. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, not, not actually super dirty. side cover at least. Let's see how much. We'll reap 
position the camera for better visibility. And this is the floppy disk drive, so this is the one we are interested in swapping out. Or uh, interested in looking at the 8903. 8805. Okay, this is the, the problem is that this sticker is kind of a manufacturing sticker, so that could mean like you know, number of drives. So it's not necessarily indicative of the. So we actually have to unscrew this, and that's uh, one screw, two screws, and then we can look at the drive. But I'll bring the camera, reposition it so we can have a better look inside. So anyway, that's what it what it looks like inside. So now, just a matter of warning: these kind of um, yeah retro devices they um, <laughs> didn't spend very much time thinking about how to protect the human being. So you know, this is the TV section, and those that haven't worked with TVs, they're not the same as LCDs. So you can actually have high voltages in the circuitry of, of a TV of its age and um, you have the TV control mechanism on the side there I think that the power supply is actually um, isolated in this big aluminium box so that that's relatively safe and then you have the main board in the bottom but I mean don't try and go for, to touch the main board uh, close to this TV circuitry at least not without isolating gloves or you know that you've discharged the capacitors or haven't used it for a very long time. But um, can, uh, that's a 68000 processor down there, by the way. Oh, here is the. Where did I put the screw? Okay, so I'll try and stay away from the TV. But down, down there, I don't know if you can see it. But well, that's a 68000 processor motor, and then it has the ROMs associated with it. Actually, pretty clean, and, and with this kind of retro equipment, I wouldn't su suggest being aggressive with cleaning inside them, if they actually do work. And if, I mean, if it's not terribly dusty, then I would suggest that one just um, chills it and leaves it alone. So I'm, I'm going to clean the inside of the cover, had a little bit of dust on it. And otherwise, I just think I'm going to leave it. But anyway, our main focus was the um, was to actually validate the um, reserve drive. So uh, just unplug that. And it seems to be they're using the same torque size, which is nice. And this should, according to the service manual, keeping an eye on that. So, Put your fingers on the TV. Could be a bad idea. Should actually put a piece of paper or something on top of it. So that's out. And that should be able to pull it out. Well, so far looking the same. And then we have a model number. I wonder if I could... Okay, we'll leave that dirty, so that we know that that's the original one. And then this is the replacement drive. I don't want it to slip too badly, so there. So, I'm just going to have a quick look at the connector. Just doing some chip spot checks that the groupings of the um, ground and and power seem to be the same. And now I'm going to look, double check them all now. MPF fifty two W thirty. MPF fifty two W thirty. So those have now been confirmed to be identical, at least model number wise. So then we're going to. Put the original one to the side. 
And then we're going to get rid of this cable that, that actually came with the device. So I think this was probably removed from, from some other HP equipment. And um, yeah, that was good. So this one connector is not keyed. At least not. No. Nope. So this is a with heritage oh, retro equipment. Then here you notice that. Oh, I could show. It. So here you have a flat cable, and it's very clearly um, keyed so you can't put it the wrong way around now this one here is not but we knew that since I took it off it's just been laying there and then it goes underneath this holder it can be relatively secure but it's going to actually go in there I wonder if I should actually put at least one screw Try and put this one on. Mm -hmm. Yep, seems to be the same mechanical fit. So now I have one screw, it's plugged in. I have a known working um, OS disk, which I have somewhere. So, anyway, um, this of course always a bit of a risk that when one plugs in something of unknown or origin that worst case scenario I'm going to lose this logic analyzer. Mm. Second best is the logic analyzer stays in good pace but this doesn't work. Or the third option is that it actually just works fine so let's see what happens. Fault. Of some kind. Can't insert it is. Okay. Make an action. Okay, it seems like we have a um mechanical insertion problem with the diskette. The button doesn't work. So you, you don't get this. I don't try to show it. Plug it in like that, then the button should shoot, um, shoot out and it doesn't. It's like this there's some spring mechanism or something that's not, not working correctly. Okay, this is a bit dirty. So I learned my lesson. I should have um should have opened this up. It's got lint in it. And this is very dusty. Probably most likely ruin my boot desk! Ugh. Why did I do that? That was stupid. Okay, so um, I actually need to clean the dust out of this thing even before we do any um, further investigation because it could just be jammed with dust. Okay, be back. So, now it's cleaned out the best I could. And we'll see if there's still a mechanical fault. Oh, it 
Just a bit better, but no. Still something. Something is stuck somewhere. <laughs> but it worked so um, of course contact cleaner is mainly for electronics but the thing is it can also uh, treat oxidization and, and and it does actually so now I think I got it working I mean it is old it's been used so um, to be able to get it to run absolutely perfectly. And one doesn't want to put too much oil and grease on these things. It might end up being more causing more trouble and benefit than its own. So on the camera. It's the best angle. Beauty shot. Ah! I'm jamming the mechanism by holding. Is the Ash, can't hold it there. It, it, it's the mechanism is on both sides, so on that side and, and then on that side, so not very much space to hold. It. One has to watch the one isn't um, charming the mechanism. See that thing that comes there. But I think that we can. I'm going to let that dry for a while, and then we um, we put it back in the in the box, and uh, yeah, see if the electronics works. So, put it back in. So, um, this could have also been um, salvaged from a machine, so it might not not necessarily. It didn't say in the in the selling post that what what it was removed from it just said that it that it worked it was removed i think it actually said it was removed from a working machine which of course could mean that the actual this dry was not working <laughs> anyway let's see if it blows up Pity I can't show the display. Okay, so it just says system does not found. It says expected. Oh, wait, I need to say. No. Does not look good. Try and rotate.
Dodo. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. No! What did I do? Oh yeah, I have a theory that um, there are grounds in the ribbon cable. But it could be that this is this... No, not the next. Oh, whatever. Maybe it's just the contactor that's not... Which, yeah, it's loading. Loading. And the main display has popped up. Difficult to move the camera around to show it. So, okay, but I'm still not really happy with the mechanism. Let's see if I... Okay, but now this moved directly from the beginning. We set it to zero. Okay, let's try to. Oh, it seems to be okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, this will probably get sold if I bring in um, just a little tiny bit of uh, lubricant, silicone oil, or something. Or maybe white grease would be more appropriate. Because now if I assist it just there and put a little tiny pressure on that, then it loads. And then I have to press it, this is normal, I have to press a button too. But that sounds happy. Complain. Sounds exactly like the other one does, and it's not reseeking. So if a, if a floppy drive, if it's in bad alignment and it has reading problems, then it will um, actually go to zero and back and zero and back and zero and back. But this just seems to be doing its normal loading the operating system, and then it finds the menu files and stuff. But this is annoying. Operate. But it is this one. I can feel that that's that it's this this thing that the metal piece that needs to slide. It's junk. So what I will do is I will power down and then I will focus on trying to get that lubricated. And see if we can can't get it eased up. So, put in some um, white lithium grease because this actually st pretty much stays at the location you put it. Um, and then let's see. Now I'm going to test this on camera because that usually will make it fail. No, see? Oops, no, oh, that worked. No, that's not working. <laughs> I thought I had it. Working rather well. No, it's still not perfect. But it's much better. 
I'm going to say that we put this in the machine and see what it does there. And then just use it. Because now I've lubricated it so the lubrication will kind of work its way around. So let's um, put it back in the machine and see, see what happens. So let's see if it's dead from power up like it was when we first time tested it. But now the ribbon cable should be on and this is tight. So let's see. Oh, I should have put a little tiny bit of grease on the stepper. And then we take the boot disc. And then we try and insert it. And then we say load. So actually, since I spent so much time cleaning this, and, uh, and yeah, except for the heads, I, have, I actually don't have a head cleaning disc. You can actually get them limited stock only, but you can actually get um, cleaning heads or cleaning discs to clean the heads. So that's perfect. Okay, so I will. Um, Put the cover back on it and just reassemble this. As I'm going to call it a day. Well, that, I see. As I said, and then I'm going to actually take this one here. And I, I doubt that it's as dirty, but I'm actually going to um, take the cover off this one and see if it needs to be also cleaned. But it does look a lot more cleaner. So I keep this, I'm actually going to use the spare in the, in the device and have that one separate. So now I know that both of them work. So, next is to, um, yeah, take it out again. So I can't put the cover on if it's in there. Yep. So I'll put the cover on the diskette drive, put the cover on the analyzer. Now we'll see if it wants to cooperate. And if it works then I will close it up. Sounding happy. As you remember I did put this disc into the when it was this this disc drop is very dirty so I wouldn't panic the first time this gave an error because the, the likelihood that this didn't get some dust in it is pretty, pretty minimal. But it, se it seems to be fine. So. And the disk drive seems to be, yeah, it does its job. So I think we have a working unit, so I can just um, screw in the rest of the screws, do that offline. Um, yeah. So I hope this will help you if you need to do the similar type of operation. And then I would just like to, yeah, again repeat that this is a this is a special disk drive. Um, the pin out here is not the same, not the same as normal PC floppy disk drives. Um, it also doesn't have the traditional power connector, and um, this runs at 600 RPM. And there's been lots of, um, I found lots of places, uh, yeah, online where people have been trying to copy, either copy the original system disks or create disks from images. And um, I've been going through lots of the, their different, um, I've used um, software running on Linux, DD, Lyft, Tools. I've run uh, similar tools on XP, uh, and then I've run tools on DOSBox, and what else have I done? Ah, uh, you know, basically using a standard PC uh, floppy disk drive, and, and my success rate has been zero. I, 
going to continue experimenting. <laughs> I thought I'd, if I should make videos about all the things that have failed, that haven't worked. Um, but then I thought that maybe not so fun. Um, so if I make a video, I will then describe what methodology worked. Um, to actually, uh, yeah, copy the physical system disk or whatever other, there are utility disks and stuff that are related to this unit also, but uh, you know, to, to actually take a, to make a, take this diskette and make a copy of it to another diskette and have it boot up, uh, if I succeed. Or alternatively to put this into an image file and then put the image file on a new copy disk, but currently the only reliable, yeah, the only method that I know that works uh, to get a copy of a system disk for this op unit uh, is to copy it in this unit itself. You have disk utilities or system IO utility where you can say duplicate disk. Or there are people that have said that they have original um, old HP um, Unix systems and stuff. Uh, that they've been able to copy the files, copy the, yeah, duplicate the disk, which is not surprising because uh, around this same time frame they did have, um, yeah, workstations and stuff that used the same um, floppy technology, probably the drive. But uh, HP also uh, very close to this time period, moving forward maybe a couple of years, they gave up on this. Um, custom floppy disk drive, like most of the industry did, they, they moved to the what we consider the standard floppy disk drive for PCs and the DOS and and the um, they also moved to use the DOS um, format um, uh, on the disks so uh, <laughs> this is a little bit of a between thing you know and, and I, I actually personally think that copying I have a feeling that copying those, th these, the, the, oh, let's be very clear, sp specifically copying the disks that were crea are created on this uh, model of the HP analyzer with this type of a disk drive. I would assume that it's not really possible with a standard um, PC disk drive, even if you even if you're using hardware copying methodology, and then another warning is that because this pinout here is not the same, um, there have been attempts to use um, uh, floppy disk emulators, even to the extent where people have tried to rewire um, the connection, um, but they haven't been very successful in that either. So, yeah, so sadly the. Yeah, move 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 forward a few miles and then then this disk format and um, this drive disappears and then you then then you probably get a standard PC floppy disk drive and a um, possibly even a DOS file system. But even if if they move to to the standard PC drive and and you have the lift file system on it, which is HP's uh, semi proprietary ah, well not proprietary because many of built tools for it, but if they moved to the, if it had the lift system on it, that's not really, that's not a problem, because those disks can be read using a multitude of tools, as, as long as they move out, <laughs> as long as you get rid of that disk drive, uh, then, then, and, and move to the more PC compatible uh, floppy disk uh, unit, then, um, as far as I can see, there are no issues. But if you want to run this specific analyzer of this type, then then you're stuck with this. Also, the problem that it's a it's a lift lift system lift file system, which in itself is actually not a problem. But then um, the it, it actually has this hardware, uh, which is very uh, yeah. I wouldn't say extremely deviant from the PC version, but it's it's not a plug and play. Uh, and, and it's actually quite a high rotation speed, 600 RPM, it's not... I mean, the, the PC floppy disk drives that I tried are around 300 RPM. So, yeah. But anyway, we I have at least generated now a spare um, floppy disk drive, so I, th I have two of these now, so uh, if this one claps out, then I can um, just switch to this one. And, and, and that'll definitely do me for the lifetime of what I'm going to use this for hobbying. 
anyway so if you enjoyed this one consider um, subscribing and hang on for the next one i'm going to yeah this will be appearing in several more probably several episodes in different ways and i i might as i said that i've if i if i do find a software based uh, standard PC floppy disk drive method to copy this specific disk, and I mean the disk created by this machine. Uh, move it to an image or, or copy it to another another floppy. Then I will make a video about it. Otherwise, I'll just keep the work internal because it's, it's not really much fun saying this this doesn't this doesn't work this doesn't. But I mean many of the many of the. Um, Many of the advice written out there on the net is, is very unclear whether they actually succeeded or not. And um, lots of it is just like, you could try this tool, it might work. And, and I can understand why people are confused because the, 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 this, the, yeah, again, coming back to this thing, that this is a little bit of a middle model solution when it comes to um, this try. So, this generation and backwards then it's pretty much custom HP stuff when it, even if this the disk drive is Sony but it's it's one could consider it a bit of a HP uh, standard stuff so it's not a global more industry standard so um, but I'm yeah happy so I'll probably, as I said, I'll probably take this cover off and, uh, and just check that if this drive needs to also be cleaned. But anyway, I think that's enough for this one. And um, I'm going to screw this up. Screw the cover on again and um, see you in the next one. So, a little bit of bonus. <laughs> this, is the, this is the drive that I took out of it. And it's uh, ah, practically, practically speaking retro clean. So. I don't think I'm going to um, clean this. You, you have to be a bit careful with retro uh, mechanical equipment so you don't overdo it. So no, I'm not going to do it. This, is wor this has worked perfectly for a long time and I've been using this so I'm going to just keep it as it is. But anyway, I thought I'd just... So you remember what this other one looked like when I started with it. This one is in much better shape.